If you're looking for some of the best iPad apps on the App Store, then look no further, because in this video, we'll be taking a look at my favorite apps that you may find useful for the iPad. So I recently got my hands on the M2 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. And while I do use my 14 inch MacBook Pro for you know video editing, for the past couple of weeks now, I kind of just want to dock this MacBook Pro at home and bring this iPad with me everywhere I go. Now, some of these apps that I'll be highlighting in just a little bit will be giving you guys a sweet deal on their pro version. So keep watching to learn more. And to clarify, I did not get paid from any of these apps or developers, nor do I have a sponsor for this video. So without further ado, let's talk apps. So the first app that I wanted to feature is probably going to be a fan favorite and a question that I get asked in about 90% of my videos. And it's where do you get your wallpapers from? Now, majority of my wallpapers, if I didn't create them myself, is from an app that I've been using the past few years, and it's called Backdrops. It used to be an Android exclusive app, but a few months ago, they finally launched their iOS app, which looks awesome on the iPad. And it's free. Backdrop offers hundreds, maybe thousands of high quality wallpapers for your iPad, your iPhone, or even your Mac, and they all look really good too. Now you can pay $4 once if you don't wanna deal with ads and you get access to exclusive wallpapers just for pro users. Now, Backdrops was super nice enough to give me 10 codes to give to you guys who wants the pro version of this app for iOS. And all you have to do to win is to subscribe to the channel, comment down below with your X username or your Instagram username, cause that's how I'll be reaching out to you guys. And I'll be picking 10 of you guys until April 5th. And then we have an app called Craft, which has become one of my favorite apps for the iPad and an app that I use every single day for work. Now, videos like these, I can't really do on a fly since there's so many things to remember and so many things to mention all in one video. So I usually write scripts and with Craft, I get this really beautiful looking interface and a UI that's not so confusing. Plus with Craft, I can organize majority of my notes into one page, split it into multiple folders, but you know, still keeping it organized. I also love the fact that I can have a to-do list inside my script so I can keep track of the project and make sure that I cover everything in my script. You can also change how the page looks, add a cover page, attach files to it, check the word count, plus you can share and collaborate with anyone by sharing a link with them and even transfer out your documents to other apps that you might be using. Now, Craft is technically free, but you're limited to about 10 documents and then uh, two extra free documents after each week. Uh, you have one gigabyte of storage and a 25 megabyte file upload limit to your documents. Uh, but since you're watching this video and if you use the code HeyMarkL, you'll get 25% off the first month or year, depending on which plan you go with. And I'm not really sure how long that code will last, but with premium, you get unlimited documents, storage, file upload limits, and a few other perks for being a premium member. And again, I want to remind you guys, there's no sponsor in this video. I'm not getting a kickback from Craft or any of the apps here that I'm highlighting. I just wanted to hook you guys up with a discount code so you can try the apps that I genuinely enjoy using. Now, I wish there's some sort of option for a one-time fee to get all the features and not have to pay every month or every year. But yeah, I think Craft is a really dope note-taking app or app in general to have an all-in-one hub for all of your collective creative thoughts and ideas. All right, so this next one is a pretty sweet app if you're constantly dealing with PDF files or contracts that needs to be signed and submitted. And this is by far one of the best PDF apps that I've used on the iPad and it's called PDF Expert. Now, what I like about this app is that it has a super clean interface and you have access to everything you need right at your fingertips. It allows me to annotate documents using my Apple Pencil. I can add stamps like approve or confidential, for example. I can enable dark mode so it's easier on the eyes or even turn on sepia mode so it looks more like a book. Now there is a premium plan available which unlocks so many more features which I think are worth it and this is gonna set you back for about $10 a month and $50 a year, but there is a free trial when you first sign up, which is always a good thing. But yeah, it just really depends on you whether you know the premium plan is worth it for you guys, uh, but here's what it gets you. First, you're able to edit or modify an existing text directly in a PDF. You can also add links to any part of the text or image on a document or a website or jump to a different page if you have a super long PDF. You can also merge and combine multiple PDF files into one, 
Now the last premium feature that I actually wanted to highlight, which does come in handy every single time I have to send a PDF file uh, to a client or my manager, is I can compress any large PDF files so that I can save space on my iPad or upload those files a lot quicker. Now this next one I wanna feature is my go-to calendar slash to-do list app, and it's an app called Structured. Now this can set you back for about $3 a month or $10 a year, which honestly, it's not bad. But what I did do was pay $30 and I have a lifetime license and it works on all my devices, which is awesome. And what I really like about Structured is that it helps me really tackle my day or my week. And what I mean by that is that I can see a timeline of what my day's looking like. So as an example, uh, next week I have a few things lined up. I have uh, two calls in the morning back to back. Then I have a two hour break before I film a video. And it clearly says there that I have two hours before I should film. And then later that evening, I'm gonna start doing a rough cut of the video so I can figure out what to shoot the next couple of days for B-roll. And yeah, this is how I use Structured. I like that it gives me a timeline of my day. I can also add things to an inbox of anything, whether it's just random tasks or things that I need to finish, and I can set a certain date or time at a later date when I have my schedule all figured out. Overall, it's a really good app that I like to follow, and if you're looking for a new calendar app, this one might be worth checking out. Now, moving on to some creative apps and starting off with an app called Lake. Lake is a really cool app to have on your iPad if you're looking to just relax and color on your iPad. Coloring books aren't just for kids and with Lake you can explore a ton of hand-drawn illustrations by independent artists and you can express yourself and get super creative by coloring in the artwork you select. You have access to a ton of brushes and over 700 color shades and if you don't feel like coloring someone else's artwork, you can open up a blank canvas and draw in color freely and let your imagination run wild. And just like the other apps that I've featured in this video, this is a free app, but you can also pay for a premium plan for $10 a month or $40 a year. And that'll get you access to a lot more artworks and tools so that you can really go at it if you wanna be super creative. And then next up in the creative app space is of course Final Cut Pro for the iPad, which is gonna set you back for $4.99 a month or $50 a year. And as someone who edits on Final Cut Pro on the Mac, being able to edit on the iPad using Final Cut is a game changer. Now sure, there are other apps that I can use on the iPad that are free or it doesn't have a monthly subscription plan, uh, but this app is just so much more optimized than other apps that I've used. Plus it has all the keyboard shortcuts that I'm used to. If I know that I'm not gonna be editing a super long video that'll require you know, a ton of graphics or motion graphics and a lot of sound design behind it, I'll most likely edit it on my iPad versus my MacBook Pro. I like that I can remove the iPad from the Magic Keyboard and just swipe through the timeline and with the Apple Pencil. I like that the interface looks similar enough to Final Cut Pro for the Mac, so trying to navigate around the app isn't as confusing you know, as jumping into a whole new editing software. There's also a ton of built-in titles, effects, or backgrounds that's exclusive to the iPad, and if I ever want to start a project here on the iPad, I can always send this project to my Mac and finish to edit on my computer if I wanted to. Now, the only downside I see right now, in my opinion, is that you don't really have access to third-party plugins like you do on the Mac. It can't stabilize your footage, it doesn't have object tracker, so you can't track something and tie a text onto it. And this also doesn't have advanced color correction tools like custom LUT support and all that fancy stuff that we're used to on the Mac version. Besides that though, it's a pretty good editing software for the iPad and I can't wait till they start adding more features for the iPad like supporting third-party plugins and advanced coloring tools because I think with those two features, that'll change a lot of people's opinion on this app and I can see a lot of creators using their iPad more and editing in Final Cut Pro. And then the last creative app that I wanted to highlight is of course Lightroom for the iPad, which in my opinion is the gold standard for editing photos. I love editing on Lightroom Mobile on my iPhone and being able to use this on a much bigger display is so nice to have. Now Lightroom does cost $10 a month through the App Store or through Adobe's website. But yeah, if you want an all around photo editing app, one that you can use to edit and touch up your photos on the fly, this is the app to get. Plus you can import presets from creators that are selling Lightroom presets online. I don't have one at the moment, but when I do make one, I'll be sure to leave that link in the description below. But yeah, Lightroom is an awesome app that you can use on your iPad, your iPhone, and your Mac, and everything syncs over to your account. So you can start an edit on your iPhone and then pick it up on your iPad for a more precise editing using the Apple Pencil. 
And the last app that I wanted to highlight, which is more of a productivity app, or I guess entertainment app, and it's called Orion, which is an app that basically turns your iPad into a portable HDMI monitor. Technically, the app is free, but you do need this little dongle, which is a USB-C capture card of some sort that has this uh, HDMI port at the end. And I'll leave a link to the one that I'm using below that like button so you can pick one up too. So what Orion can do here is turn your iPad into a portable display for your camera. So you can check your framing, your focus, and your color, or you can connect your iPad to a PS5 or something, and you can play your favorite PS5 games right here on your iPad. Now you can also hook up your Mac or your PC and have it act as a secondary monitor, and the audio from your game system or your Mac or your PC comes out of the iPad too, which is great, because this iPad Pro packs a punch when it comes to its speakers. And yeah, those are my favorite apps for the iPad right now. As someone who's a full on Mac user, having access to all these different apps and even millions more on the App Store kind of makes me want to just, you know, leave my Mac at home and bring the iPad with me full time. But what about you guys? Do you guys have any apps that you would recommend me check out? Please leave them in a the comment section down below. And thank you all so much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.